Decorating the Nation, we have the story on how one sorority house mom at OSU showcases her skills all the way from a sorority house to the White House. A change for state employees, find out how the latest executive order by Governor Kevin Stitt changes which social media apps can be used on government networks and why a change has been made. But first, a possible big donation to Stillwater. Find out how one bank is nearing a deal to help fund a new area in town dedicated to showcasing the heart and soul of Stillwater. All this and more coming up on The Daily O. Good evening and welcome into the Friday edition of The Daily O. I'm Tyler Tripodi filling in for Brody Myers. Thank you for joining us tonight. We begin tonight's broadcast with a big donation being worked on in Stillwater. Simmons Bank announced their partnership with the City of Stillwater as both sides are in advance negotiations on a $1.5 million donation to the Project Block 34 off of South Husband and 9th Street. The initiative is designed to revitalize what is currently an empty block by turning it into a public place that aims to reflect the heart and soul of the community. Design plans for the block include an event pavilion, amphitheater, and a plaza with public art, water features, and space for food trucks and vendors. In other news, Oklahoma Governor Kevin Stitt signed an executive order Thursday banning the social media app TikTok from state devices and networks. The order prohibits state employees or contractors that use state-issued devices from using the app or visiting its website. In a press release, Kevin Stitt states that this move is necessary to help maintain the cybersecurity of Oklahoma citizens. The executive order comes following the connections the social media app has with the Chinese company ByteDance and the information it can gather from its users. Oklahoma is not the first state to implement this. Governor Kristi Noem of South Dakota was the first governor to create this executive order for its state, employees signing it into law late last month. With the holiday season now in full swing, residents throughout the nation begin preparing their homes with holiday decorations for one. Oklahoma State Sorority House Mom, she doesn't just put her decorating skills to the test in a sorority house, but also in the White House. Camille Columbus has the story. Inside the walls of Kappa Kappa Gamma Sorority is a Stillwater resident with an incredible story. Robin Tarones is the Oklahoma State University Kappa Kappa Gamma House Mom. She has a fun personality and the women of the sorority love her dearly. Robin Tarones is not your regular house mom. She has had the privilege to be an interior designer for the White House during the Christmas season of 2020. So in that, I, I saw a little blurb about uh, they were looking for volunteer decorators for the White House, and it took me about 10 minutes to apply, and not in a million years did I think that I would be selected to do that. Robin's experience at the White House has led her to use her skills in the sorority house and fill it with her own decorations and unique touch. Robin has also influenced A.V. Doolittle, an OSU sophomore interior design major who lives in the Kappa Kappa Gamma house. I talk to her a lot about my projects. She's very encouraging about what I do and she always is excited to see um, kind of what I'm doing in my classes and she talks about how it's different and similar to kind of what she went through. And I think overall her design of the space here just makes it really feel like home. Robin Tarones impacts the lives of each girl in the sorority house and she has grown close with so many of them. That I have relationships with uh, many, many girls and all of them to some extent. So that's, it's just an awesome job. It's the best job I've had. A house mom does everything a regular mom would do. Robin helps plan the menu for meals, is in charge of food and ordering and shopping, and schedules maintenance and repairs for the house. Robin goes by Mom Rob for the girls who live in the house because she really does feel like their mom away from home, a college mom. While all of the house moms are extraordinary, Robin Tarones has had a remarkable life from being in the White House to living all over the world to further her interior design career. I pursued interior design because it was always an interest to me. So when we lived in Italy, I was able to finish up my degree because I was able to take courses where art began, where the Renaissance began in Florence and in Rome, and we went to Venice. I took classes all over Europe. So that kind of sealed the deal for me educational-wise. It truly is incredible that Kappa Kappa Gamma's mom, Rob, can share her story to a home full of 200 sorority girls and inspire them to dream bigger. This home is cared for by Miss Tarona's and none of them would have it any other way. The women in this home love their mom dearly and are so thankful for the woman she is for them. Thank you for visiting the White House and Kappa Kappa Gamma sorority with Miss Robin Tarona's. Lighting up the nation with holiday spirit. Thanks for that, Camille. With the holidays right around the corner, those winter weather temps are here to stay. 
Let's take a look into your seven day forecast to see if that will make an impact on your upcoming plans. Now, moving into the weekend, you know, we're going to have highs in the low 50s, but it will get down to the low 30s there. Moving into next week, on Monday is going to be our warmest day in the next seven days. Tuesday, we'll start to see the temperature decline. And Wednesday, it looks like we have a 30% chance of snow. Thursday, that'll turn back into rain, though, with highs of 52. Now it's time for a quick break, but when we return, the FBI has spoken out following the recent false 911 calls made throughout the state Thursday morning. Also, one major company is now being sued for a possible acquisition that could cause a monopoly. All that and more is coming up in our national headlines here on The Daily O. My name is Kayla. I've been here since the beginning, so four years. Scratch is more focused on farm and mostly made in Oklahoma products, keeping it local. Sustainability is our biggest thing. Um, that's one of the reasons why this place opened. I've been the chef here at Scratch for two and a half years. I uh, started here as a line cook. Our food and drinks are a bit separate entities almost inside the restaurant. So the food is now up to 85% of the uh, products we bring in are raised or grown locally. Uh, it's all based off of things that I grew up eating in southern Oklahoma, the things my grandparents ate. I'm not, uh, fresh food, clean food, um, organic food, sustainability, that's all of our thing. From front of house to back of house, we're able to maintain both with freshness. But made in Oklahoma means we get it straight from the farms that are 20, 30 minutes, another little county away. We get it straight from them. We would design something, it would sit on the counter, and people was either, if enough of them said, it, you know, this just is, this isn't it, it never made to the line. Dad was excited that they're all original, they were all designed on mom's kitchen table, and it gets in your blood after a while. We're very happy that Pamela and Michael have taken over the business and kept the family going. We took the business over in 2017. When we found that it was available, we wanted to keep the legacy of family alive, but it was also incredible products that deserve to be uh, a part of Made in Oklahoma's story. We were a part of Made in Oklahoma years ago, and so it kind of grew as Made in Oklahoma grew. Oklahoma is ingrained into our, everything that we did. We've been here most of our life. That's what we entailed our whole business on, was the Oklahoma homegrown feeling. Over the years, we kind of realized that you can get ribs anywhere, you can get a steak anywhere, but you can't always get a Mountain View hot link like ours. So we really decided to focus on that niche and realized we had something really special. So that's when we started focusing more on the hot links, but it's still the same family recipe they were making all those years ago. For us, many of our people that work here have been with us for for years and decades. So whereas machines kind of break down over time, the people just get better. And it shows in the products we produce. When you buy a Mountain View product, not only is it gonna taste dynamite, but you're also feeding Oklahomans. You're helping employ Oklahomans and you're helping to fund the state's economy. So what's better than that? The FBI has now issued a statement in wake of the hoax 911 calls made throughout Oklahoma Thursday morning. As of now, 10 different cities received a phone call stating there was an active shooter on school grounds, including here at Stillwater Junior High. In their statement, the FBI says they are aware of the swatting incidents across the state of Oklahoma and the nation and continue to work with law enforcement to identify the source of these calls. The FBI urges anyone with information or sees suspicious activity to contact local law enforcement immediately. Now it's time to take a look into your national headlines. Joining us in studio is Lauren Suarez at the news desk to give the latest. Lauren? Thanks, Tyler. It's now been a few days since the Democratic Party gained their 51st seat in the Senate, but one senator is leaving the party. Senator Kirsten Sinema of Arizona is leaving the Democratic Party and registering as an independent. Even with the change, this won't likely change the Senate's balance of power. There are currently two independent senators who caucus with the Democrats, Bernie Sanders of Vermont and Angus King of Maine. Sinema wouldn't promise to do the same, but said she expects to keep her committee assignments, a signal that she doesn't plan to upend the Senate composition. 
Her move wasn't a big surprise. Cinema was one of two moderate Democrats, the other being West Virginia's Joe Manchin, who have broken with Democrats on the key issues recently. Confounding their efforts to push through preferred legislation specifics on things like President Biden's Build Back Better Economic and Environmental Bill. There are also those who believe Cinema's move was meant to avoid a Democratic primary challenge in 2024. The Federal Trade Commission is suing to block Microsoft's acquisition of video game company Activision Blizzard. The $69 billion deal would make Microsoft the third largest video game publisher in the world. The FTC's complaint says if the deal went through, Microsoft would hold too much power in the industry. The antitrust regulator claims the company would be able to harm competition and negatively affect price, player experience, and game quality. Microsoft argues the deal would actually create more opportunities for gamers and developers. The company is confident the deal will still close. If it does, Microsoft would get control of popular franchises such as Call of Duty and World of Warcraft. The man at the center of the tremendous collapse of cryptocurrency exchange FTX has agreed to testify before the Senate Banking Committee next week. FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried said on Twitter Friday he would try to help lawmakers understand what led to the crash, as well as his own failings. Several members of Congress had demanded his testimony. FTX marketed itself as a beginner-friendly way to get involved in digital assets. It was one of the biggest crypto exchanges in the world until last month when it faced a sudden wave of customer withdrawals it couldn't cover. There were billions of dollars in losses, with investors filing lawsuits and FTX and sister hedge fund Alameda filing for bankruptcy. Federal prosecutors are also investigating whether FTX misappropriated customer funds. Bankman Freed has denied misusing customer deposits. That's all we have from the news desk. Back to you, Tyler. Thanks for that, Lauren. Back here in Stillwater, students begin to pack their bags to head home for the holidays. But for those traveling back home out of the country, that may be more challenging than domestic travel. Allison Lucky breaks down the challenges international students face on their journey home. After their last final exam, most students pack their bags and go home for the break. But for international students, to travel or not travel depends on many factors. Visa rules and processing times in different countries. We have to get a signature uh, from ISS and also bring with us our I-20 and uh, transcript. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's not the same because our status here is as an alien. So we as students want to make sure that uh, when we are coming back to the United States, like we won't have any problem with migration or something. But most importantly, money. The holidays are very small, like the break is not long enough. Also, tickets are very, very expensive to travel all the way across the globe. According to Forbes, airfare inflation is up 42.9% compared to the overall inflation of 8.2%. Many of OSU's 1,500 international students simply can't get in their car and drive to a few hundred miles to see their friends and family. They have to save big and pay big. So in summer, if I would pay 800 for a round trip, now I would have to think of an average of 1,400 of a round trip. A main factor as to why Abhishek decided to stay. First Christmas I was alone by myself. It's hard in the sense that you have to save. Valentina is from Mexico, but decided to spend Christmas with her boyfriend's family in Italy. Surprisingly, flights to both places only have a difference of about $300. I was looking for flights to Italy and they are kind of similar comparing to Mexico City. But she won't be alone, much like those staying in Stillwater, since OSU has given them a community and opportunities to celebrate the holiday. Time for a quick break, but when we come back, Connor Bergen has the latest in sports. I'm Kristen Hawkins. I went to Oklahoma State University here in Stillwater in 99 to 2004. I've always felt like Stillwater needed more family-friendly things to do, and we have opened up AR Workshop. We do everything from knitting blankets that can be done in a three-hour class, and we create doormats and porch signs the Christmas wreaths with our yarn that we use for the blankets. We also do, um, we just started a new project for gnomes and we've done pumpkins during the fall. But our big thing that we do here are interior signs. Our designs are extremely unique to our workshop. Customers come in, it's everything is here for them to do. They create everything. They can be as hands-on as they want. They came in here to relax and have fun and that they are proud of their project that they've made. 
Ace in the Bowl salsa started many, many years ago. I was trying to find a recipe to take to a family gathering, and so I started messing around with different recipes, and I took a little bit from here and a little bit from there, and I came up with a salsa that is truly unique. Ace in the Bowl salsa is an olive oil based salsa with tomatoes, green chilies, green onions, and black olives. There's no sugar added, it's gluten free, low calorie, low carb, low fat, low sodium. So it's a very, very, very good alternative to any snack you may want. As of right now, I'm just looking to be in Oklahoma and having a successful business within the state. If uh, my grandkids could ever take it over when they're old enough, that would be my dream. You may have been to casinos at some point in your life, but do you really know the truth behind the game you're playing? Casinos were very polemic or very uh, controversial when they came out. Let's do that. Making it the world's largest casino, it contributed massively to the Chickasaw Nation posting a net revenue of $1.4 billion for the fiscal year of 2017. Welcome back into the sports side of the Daily Yo. I'm Connor Bergen. Let's start things right here on campus. Cowboy safety Jason Taylor II has been named as a second team member of the 2022 Walter Camp All-America team. This season, the OKC product played a key role in a Cowboy defense that dealt with a multitude of injuries throughout the season, ranking at number one among all players in the Power Five in interceptions and second with solo tackles. Taylor now marks the 28th player that has earned a spot on what the recognized All-America list teams, making this the sixth consecutive year for the program. Taylor and the Cowboys continue to look to finish their season in winning ways as they'll travel to Arizona for the guaranteed rate bowl December 27th against the Wisconsin Badgers. Moving things on over to the hardwood, Cowboy basketball will be hitting the road to the Barclays Center in Brooklyn this Sunday against the red-hot Virginia Tech Hokies. The Hokies come into battle 9-1, and one, riding a four-game win streak thanks to their offensive firepower, scoring 70 or more in seven of their 10 games. While the Cowboy defense has held up throughout the year, ranking in the top 50 in points allowed per game, they'll now look to snap their winless record against Virginia Tech as they've now gone 0-4 all time. Tip-off between the two is set at 1 p.m. While the Cowboys look to find their groove this season, center Musa Cisse has made quite the name for himself with his abilities on the court and especially on the defensive end. The reigning Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year looks to continue to advance his game, now looking to be one of the best in the nation. Zach Berger has more. Reigning Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year Musa Cisse has not slowed down coming into this season. After leading the Big 12 in blocks last year, head coach Mike Boynton says the sky is the limit for the seven-footer. I think he's playing at the All-American All -American level. I really do. Um, the, the impact that he's having on our defense, I mean, you just can't get good shots when he's in there. Um, and he's not blocking 10 or 11 of them, but guys are going in there looking for him now and not necessarily taking shots that they normally would take. Uh, and then obviously the way he's rebounding the ball, gives him a chance to, to really you know, make a big, big difference as we move forward to you know, playing against Big 12 teams. Cisse continues to put up dominant stats to start out the season, averaging around nearly 11 rebounds, over three blocks, and almost one steal a game. But for Musa, he's just doing what he loves and taking care of business. And that's, the thing, that's something I enjoy. I enjoy blocking shots, so I'm probably not surprised, but I'm just kind of surprised because I feel like it's somebody chasing me, like it's trying to take my spot, but... He does it all, all the time in practice. He, he blocks shots all the time. So, so for me to make that, I don't know. I don't know if he, they're going to be able to catch up because I ain't, I ain't stopping. <laughs> Everybody got to do their job. I feel like if some people, they like him, he got to shoot. Like, also, we got to rebound and block shot. Currently at the top of the Big 12 in rebounds and blocks, Musa Cisse looks to excel going into conference play. 
Reporting from Ocali TV, I'm Zach Berger. Thanks for that, Zach. Time for one last time out here on The Daily O. But when we come back, we'll dive into the history books and see what happened on this day in sports history. Also, we do have the latest details about the Washington Commanders' ongoing investigation. You don't want to go anywhere. The Daily O will be right back. Tucked away in the city of Ripley, Oklahoma, the award-winning Washington Irving Trail Museum showcases the heritage and history of Payne County. This museum holds antiques, treasures, and artifacts that one cannot find at any other museum. With hundreds of historical antiques that display OSU history, along with Native American history, the museum has it all. The museum is well known for their book containing pictures and news articles about Frank Eaton, the original Pistol Pete. Dale Kluber opened Washington Irving Trail Museum in 1994 with his collection of historical mementos. This museum is filled from wall to wall with Oklahoman history. The Washington Irving Trail Museum is 15 minutes outside of Stillwater. Experience history at one of Oklahoma's hidden gems. My name is James Ramiti. Fired Up Stilly is the name of the business, and I'm one of the owners. We all three met the three owners working as employees at a similar place like this. What I hope for is for everybody to feel welcome, like family. Not only do I want students to feel welcome to come here and study and use our free Wi-Fi, but also I want adults and families to be able to come in. We've built a connection with a lot of people, and you know, Stillwater is a big community, so we just want to invite everybody to be able to eventually make their way through our doors. Well, definitely the T's, I would say. Most people fall in love with them. They just got a great amount of energy, gets you going through your day, and it just kickstarts you to get you know, everything you need to done. For myself, it would just have to be, you know, being the owner, owning something that, you know, is able to impact other people's lives, and, you know, the way we can affect our community is something that I really have always wanted to do. We love our clients and our customers that come through every day, and we enjoy getting to know them. We use the very best of the best ingredients. Demerara sugar is the best that is. Very high quality fruits, berries. The milk we use is the best milk there is. That's why it makes our product stand by itself. I like to make yogurt because I like to eat yogurt. We've been doing this for ourselves for many years because uh, it's a tradition in our family. And we want to have a product which would be very similar to French yogurt but uh, with our touch of uniqueness. Linking our name, our product, with the uh, reputation of the Made in Oklahoma Coalition was probably the best thing we have done as far as promoting our product. All right, well, it is finals week here at Oklahoma State, but it's time to pull out those history books. Let's start taking a look at what happened on this day in sports history. Keeping things more recent on the gridiron, in 2018, Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers made history, breaking Tom Brady's record for most completed passes without an interception thrown at 360 in a Packers 34-20 win over the Atlanta Falcons. Later that day, though, however, this is the first in on this day history. Tom Brady wasn't going to sit around and lose one of his records, so he thought, I need to go get one back. Brady would break the NFL record for most touchdown passes at 582, surpassing Peyton Manning. As of now, both of those records have yet to be broken. It seems as if it's going to be quite safe for the foreseeable future. All right, uh, let's start moving back into what's actually even happening in the sports world. Week 14 of the NFL is now underway after a stunning comeback win for the L.A. Rams over the Las Vegas Raiders, 17-16. Former Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield made a starting debut for the Rams after signing with them just 48 hours prior and made quite the name for himself when needed the most. Despite being down 16-3 with under three and a half minutes to play, 15 seconds remaining on the clock, Baker Mayfield, he finds Van Jefferson for the 23-yard score to take the lead, marking Baker's first touchdown as a Ram and in big-time fashion. Mayfield finished the night going 22 of 35 for 230 yards, propelling the Rams to their fourth win of the year. 
while this Rams win doesn't do much for their playoff hopes, this was a massive hit for the Raiders' chances. Now falling to 5-8 and eight, and basically having to win the remainder of their games to have a shot at the wild card. Keeping things in the NFL, the House Oversight Committee now says Washington Commander's owner, Dan Snyder, has allowed a toxic workplace to exist for decades. When the NFL tried to investigate the team, the committee said Snyder tried to intimidate witnesses and pay off whistleblowers. The committee's year-long investigation found the team permitted sexual harassment, bullying, and other misconduct work for years. When Snyder testified remotely last July, he evaded questions by saying more than a hundred times that he did not know or could not recall information. The committee says he gave misleading answers. Republican members of the committee slammed the report, calling it a waste of taxpayer dollars. The team also responded, saying the committee was not interested in pursuing the truth and only crashed down one side of the story. Snyder has denied any wrongdoing and said last month he is now considering whether he should be selling the team or not. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this Friday edition of The Daily O and also for this semester. Thank you so much for your support throughout this semester, for all the viewers back at home tuning in every day for the latest happening here in Stillwater and abroad. We'll see you right back here on this desk next semester. For The Daily O, I'm Connor Bergen. Good night, everyone. Everybody. My name is Emily Shooping. I'm your marketing coordinator for the Made in Oklahoma Coalition. I'm coming to you with an amazing opportunity. We are teaming up with the Ocali Media Group at Oklahoma State University. We want to tell your story on the following platforms, streaming, newspaper, and digital. This opportunity will not only allow your story to be told locally, but nationally as well. I am so excited for each of you to join in on this tremendous opportunity. This will not only be good for your business, but it will be good for our great state of Oklahoma. You can be expecting an email from me soon with more details about this opportunity. Local has a name, local has a face, local has a flavor. The Made in Oklahoma Coalition. are when folks drink our water is that they'll drink it for a few days and find out the difference. They'll start feeling better because there's been no chemical in our water. There's a list of good things that we have. We don't have any bad things in it. I see the future of divine water as being worldwide, which will bring outside dollars into the state. It means a lot to me because I started it, I guess, and our family started it. We use the very best of the best ingredients. Demerara sugar is the best that is. Very high quality fruits, berries. The milk we use is the best milk there is. That's why it makes our product stand by itself. I like to make yogurt because I like to eat yogurt. We've been doing this for ourselves for many years uh, because it's a tradition in our family. And we want to have a product which would be very similar to French yogurt but uh, with our touch of uniqueness. Linking our name, our products, with the uh, reputation of the Made in Oklahoma Coalition was probably the best thing we have done as far as promoting our product.